Hello, this week we're going to be concentrating on improving our brush control and practicing our washes. Mostly in this instance we're going to be concentrating on flat washes. Um, this is a picture that caught my eye and it's a watercolour by an artist who was inspired by seeing the Anthony Gormley statue uh, called Another Time in the sea at Margate. It, it's just by the Turner Contemporary Gallery there. Um, I looked online and I found a number of different photos, both of the Margate sculpture and another version called Another Place that's in the sea uh, near Liverpool at Crosby. Uh, in that instance, all the figures are looking out to sea, uh, whereas in this case, in Margate, they have a different orientation. Um, and indeed, we've got one in Oxford as well uh, that's looking down over Broad Street. Um, and I think they're quite inspirational in terms of the fact that they are sculptures within an environment where we can practice these flat washes and then put the sculpture within those pictures in order to both practice, it, uh, practice the washes and indeed uh, a little bit of uh, perspective as well. There are plenty of pictures, I think about 10 of them all together, uh, down below so you can choose the ones you like the thing the ones that you think will give you more practice or the ones you just simply like the look of um, and indeed feel free to do your version of them as well because practice makes perfect this is the first of our pictures um, and basically you can see top half is a lovely flat wash and the bottom half is a broken sort of dry brush effect um, you could do this in any colour you wanted, but let's just have a go at doing a flat wash just to, just as a little demonstration. What you want to do is make sure um, that you mix enough paint. If you run out of paint halfway through, you're going to have to stop and you'll have to mix some more and one half of your wash will be drying before the others and it, it won't be as flat as you want it to be. Um, I personally don't tend to wet the paper first because I find that this paper, this is Royal Academy, really quite rough paper. It takes the paint really very well and I don't feel the need to paint it. What you want to try and aim for with, basically you want each stroke of your brush to be the same as the one before. So don't keep going back and putting extra water in because by doing that you're going to be diluting it. So we've got this lovely just French ultramarine. I chose this because I've got a lot of it and want to use it up. Um, but basically what we're doing, we load the brush up and we're going from left to right. Um, be aware of the movement of the shoulder. If you're going from just working from your wrist, you'll run out of, of length basically and start going downhill like that. So if you want a nice horizontal line, you want to take it across in that direction. So don't do that, um, <laughs> basically left to right. So if you move too quickly, it will break up. But there we are, go far and then start moving with the shoulder. So it takes you right to here. Um, go further, depending on how big your piece of paper is, if the, the figure is about here, you want to make sure that you you go further either side. Otherwise, you have to go back and, and tidy up. The second pass is basically just catching the bottom of the one before. If you go too quickly, you'll get a dry brush stroke. So we want to go along with this and follow it, follow it through. Go back exactly the same again. None of this extra washer because we want the same paint over and over again so just catch it if you go too quickly you'll expose little bits of the tooth of the paper as I said that's useful when you're dry brushing you don't want that to happen now can you see how lovely and flat that is lots of control lots of paint you don't have to worry about running out yeah Another one. Can 
I see that lovely, lovely flat, flat wash. Now, quite a few of you had problems when we were doing the little bit of um, blossomy sprig the other week. Um, plenty of you working, let me just show you if I just draw this quickly. You had something sort of this shape, uh, sort of going around here, and that that was sort of like that. And we had an awful lot of scribble, um, and there seemed to be quite a problem with painting round something, um, because what was happening when you were getting to about here, it was getting very much like this. Same thing you need to do here. Decide whether you want it stronger, closer to the object, um, but then you can start, if you want to, start making it into a variegated uh, wash or indeed a graded wash by adding more water as you go up. But you want to stop um, at a desirable point, otherwise it will just look shaggy round the edges. What I tend to do is at this point I would add some water and then that means I can soften it. But keep going much further than you'd think right out maybe up to about up to there uh, and then you can decide at what point you will you will mount it. But you see you, there is there is quite a lot of control. If you want you, um, you can go and put another layer on because watercolour is about glazing so you can add more and more colour if you're not satisfied with it but you can really make it really quite quite smooth um, right so if we get back to this one bottom half this is basically just a, a dry brush so this time what we want to do we want to paint but we want to um, just catch on the, the tooth of the paper. Um, if we put that up here. So this is sort of flat washy, but if we go quite quickly, you will see that we use the paper to do the work, which is quite nice. So we can just go across here and get that, that broken, broken line. If you've got very smooth paper, hot press paper, obviously it's not going to do it quite as well. Um, you need to practice with your different with your different brushes. Some will work better better than than others. And it's up to you how much you do it. You can go back and put some more over the top or keep if you want that you can you can soften it in a little bit later. Practice makes perfect. Uh, this one here ostensibly seems quite grey, um, but we have an op uh, opportunity here to make a really interesting tonal picture. Um, you might have a Payne's Grey, it might, you might choose a colour that you want to mix yourself, but basically here we've got quite a, a flat wash, um, the distant horizon slightly darker with those distant mountains, uh, mountain for hills over there, and then you've got a graded wash coming from the top downwards which is giving us a lovely perspective, and then the vertical of the figure um, cutting through that horizon line makes for a very dramatic picture. So lots of potential there and you could try it in many different colours. Um, this one here, um, just very, very brave colour. We're starting off with some lovely peaches and that very strong turquoise colours. And it's very much a sense of bands of colours, so there's lots of fun to be had there. You could do it in these colours or on, and just choose your own, really. One thing I'd like to do is to talk about your very, very dark colours and how you might choose to mix them. 
uh, don't just go for a ready mix black because it's always going to be very very sooty um, what I would choose is something like well any of your very dark colors would do um, and then just add red to them so if you have something that's a very sort of viridian color but if you mix that with one of your your dark reds um, a little in crimson something like that um, you'll get a really interesting black. Can you see? And it's a lot more luscious. It's a lot more velvet-like than if you just use black straight from, uh, straight from your palette, um, which always goes a little bit sooty, I think. This one I like as well. Um, once again, the colours are very much the same, but they're just different depths of, of what other colour you might choose. So it's sort of lighter here on the horizon um, around here in, in the sea with a lovely contrast of, of the vertical figure. Uh, reminds me very much of Caspar David Friedrich, who was a Victorian romanticist. And he was very well known for his allegorical landscapes, which typically feature um, f sort of very contemplative figures who were silhouetted against skies or um, morning mists or trees or Gothic ruins. And he was trying to convey a sort of subjective emo emotional response to nature. And I think the Anthony Gormley pictures um, have that same sort of feel to them. There's a few more, uh, some very bright ones, which I think you'll just love, just for the, the pleasure of painting and trying the different colours. This one, again, is a lovely progression through the peaches and the yellows through to the oranges, and then those rosy reds down here, and the almost bluey purples. Once again, make sure that you mix your darks uh, with a nice uh, mixture of maybe your blues and reds to get a black. Don't go for black out of a tube because it will just kill those colours dead. This one here again is very very moody, um, more abstract because lovely blues softening into pinks across here and it almost, its form comes from these, these verticals. But what you really need to make sure is that you get your perspective right. And it's so easy to get it wrong if you do a lovely flat wash and then you're a weeny bit frightened of, of putting the dark on in, in the form of these um, uh, sculptures. Um, practice first, put little bits of paper on there to make sure you get it right, or do a, a version of it, a drawn version first to make sure you do it correctly. Um, really what you want to do, a little bit of help with perspective, is to make sure these people are in the right place in respect of the horizon line. Um, this is our horizon line here. Let's just pop that in straight. Okay. Um, because of where they are and because the, la the, the actual um, beach is flat, all of these people you can see, irrespective of how tall they are, have the same eye line, which is pretty much on the horizon line. So we can put that little one in about here, this one about here. This bigger chap is sort of quite big and sort of taking up that much. This one is here, like this. This one here. And you could just sort of make it up and you can see that's where they that's where they all are. If you had a really big person, their head would be on the same level and they'd be about here. Do you see that? So all these people are basically in this place taking up the room they should. Um, if we actually put somebody above the horizon line, like this person here, can you see how huge that person is in, in compared to other people? You can see how wrong it is, really. If we were all sitting 
on a, if we were sitting at a lower level looking up, it would be different again. But basically, you have to try and work out where you specifically are in the picture and make sure you get that perspective right. You can also see how wrong it is because all these people, if they were looking at each other, you can see their eye level. It all makes sense. Whereas if we were looking at this chap, we'd all be looking up to him and he would be absolutely huge. This one, very beautiful, very contemplative. Obviously the perspective is very different because we're very low down and we're looking up here. But some fabulous, fabulous merging of colours here, which is something that you can, you can practice with, with your washes. Obviously, keep the water nice and clean because as soon as that lovely yellow has the slightest bit of blue in it, it's going to be turning green and we don't want that. So.